Welcome. Let's take a look now at some of the events to watch out for for next week, the week starting Monday, the 16th of January. Let's begin with the economic calendar as we look out. First of all, on that Monday, we get overnight numbers coming through from Japan. We get producer prices. Japan's a little bit more active, a little bit later on in the week. Let's take a look at Tuesday uh, and Tuesday, 17th of January, where we get the Australian Westpac uh, consumer confidence number out overnight. Uh, fourth quarter of GDP from China, industrial production, retail sales as well from the Chinese economy. And just before the European markets get underway, we get UK unemployment. And just shortly after the first trades across Europe, we get German ZEW economic sentiment data out. Let's look at Wednesday, Wednesday the 18th, where that big number for Japan uh, kicks in. And after all the recent activity in the bond market, it's been interesting to see just what comes through with a statement from the Bank of Japan. It's making an interest rate decision, but this statement is quite often the most interesting part of what Japan has to say. 7 a.m., UK consumer prices. And then later on in the day, uh, we get numbers out in the US, which gives a snapshot of the consumer with retail sales and then producer prices as well. Industrial production, business inventories, housing market index from the NAHPB and then the American Petroleum Institute crude oil inventories after that big rise in inventories that we saw this last week. Thursday the 19th, that we start overnight in Japan, where we get more numbers out, trade numbers uh, from the Japanese economy, and at right about the same sort of time, the unemployment rate in Australia. Later on in the day, uh, we kick in with some uh, B-category uh, numbers, I think I'd call them, uh, building permits, housing starts, the weekly jobless claims, the Philly Fed manufacturing index, and then the EIA crude oil inventories. And rounding off the week, as we wake up on the last trading day, we get the loan prime rate through from China, and then the Japanese consumer prices, uh, GFK consumer confidence here in the UK, along with retail sales, and then later on existing home sales in the States and the Baker Hughes oil rig count. Let's catch up with Axel Rudolph, IG's chief uh, technical analyst, uh, with a choice of chart to watch out for next week and a trade uh, around the data. What are you looking at from the economic calendar, Axel? Um, Jeremy, I'm looking at the uh, German ZEW economic sentiment indicator for January because that could give us an indication of um, the, the outlook uh, that uh, uh, is to do with the German economy. And if you look at the DAX 40, which has risen by 7% since the beginning of the year, and also broken some really key resistance area, it will be interesting to see that whether we can uh, continue with that upward momentum we've seen over the last few weeks. So at the moment on the daily chart, we're just testing a, a support line and we may uh, grow, drop through it simply because it's a very steep line. But if you look on the weekly chart, you'll see that uh, we are trading uh, right uh, at the top of a key resistance area going back all the way to May 2021. And it'll be interesting to see next week on that, on, on that ZEW data whether we can uh, stay above that resistance area. Uh, which should going forward now act as support, meaning that the uh, um, May and October lows taking us back down towards 14,814, uh, whether they can now act as support going forward and whether we can see further upside next week as well as in the last two, two, two weeks that we've seen so far. Okay, thanks, uh, Axel. Back to Axel in just a minute with the uh, choice of trade around the corporate numbers next week. Let's take a look at the corporate activity. Uh, it is a full week. And um, we start off with Rio Tinto. It's an operating review for the fourth quarter. Rio is really big in copper. So it'll be interesting to see for that. Tuesday, 17th of January, we got a Cardo trading statement out first thing on the fourth quarter. Cress Nicholson, Folio Earnings, Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs bring back the banks in the States. After we've seen the banks report at the back end of this last week, uh, we kicked off that fourth quarter earnings season. And I think on the whole, the picture to be taken away from some of these banks is that the numbers themselves weren't so bad. It's just a question about the outlook. And I think that's really going to be for a lot of the fourth quarter numbers uh, that we are expecting. Wednesday, the 18th. And uh, we begin with at seven o'clock in the morning, WH Smith trading statement, Burberry third quarter trading numbers and Curry's trading statement. We've seen a lot of these consumer facing corporates here in the UK produce numbers recently. And uh, that'll add to the picture, which I think on the whole has been somewhat better than some had been expecting within that sector. Alcoa uh, is in the States a little bit later on, on its fourth quarter numbers. 
On Thursday, we start off at seven o'clock in the morning in the UK with Sage Group, the accounting software company, on a first quarter trading statement. And a third quarter update as well from Dunelm. Uh, Netflix uh, of After the Bell in the US on Thursday on its uh, fourth quarter numbers and second quarter, fiscal second quarter numbers from Procter & Gamble before the markets open. Both those two are all session stocks on the IG platform, means you can trade them when they produce earnings. And rounding off the week in the UK, Close Brothers trading statement, and later on we get the oil field services company Schlumberger out with fourth quarter figures. Axel, what's your, your choice there? Quite a lot going on, of course, with earnings because of this fourth quarter earnings season really uh, kicking in properly next week. Yes, as you say, Jeremy, a lot going on, but uh, I find uh, the Goldman Sachs uh, chart quite interesting. So fourth quarter earnings out on Tuesday. And if you look at the daily chart here, we've uh, last week broken through a uh, downtrend which had been in place since uh, December and uh, then came off uh, on Friday. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see whether uh, going forward we can uh, rise up to the mid-December high, which was made just above $378, and that would then possibly take us back up again towards the November high at $389. So a lot of resistance ahead, but if that were to be uh, taken out, we could well be on our way to the $400 mark. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. And also, if a retracement lower were to be seen, whether the uh, breached downtrend which now comes in around the $355 mark, can act as support going forward together with the October to December uptrend line, uh, which uh, is seen slightly lower around the $346 mark. So uh, at the moment, we're right in the middle of that um, sort of converging uh, triangle area, and we'll have to see um, whether we can break out to the upside uh, in the next week or so. Okay, thanks so much, Axel. That is Axel Rudolph, IG's uh, chief uh, technical analyst, with his view on a chart from the corporate numbers out next week. That's Goldman Sachs. It's one of those companies in the US that uh, trades all sessions on the IG platform. Uh, we will see that report coming through the before the bell on Tuesday, so you can trade that uh, on IG uh, when it produces those figures. That's it. Have a good weekend. I'll be back at 7.30 in the morning on Monday for the early morning call.